had enough. I will go back to my parents' house. I became emotional, and this was the first time I argued against my husband, Phil. And as expected, Phil got bright red and was very angry. Then don't ever come back here. Make sure to sign the divorce papers before you leave. Saying this, Phil pushed the divorce papers into my face. I just couldn't take it anymore. I got my pen, and as I began to sign the papers, Phil widened his eyes, looking confused. Well then, thank you for everything you've done. But well, it's more like I was the one who did everything. My name is Christy. I am 30 years old and I am a full-time housewife. My husband Phil and I just got married and I'm already beginning to regret this marriage. This is because my husband completely changed the moment we got married. He used to be so kind and gentle to me, but the moment we got married, he turned into a demon. He used to be such a kind person. But how and why did he turn into a demon like this? Even though I wondered, I couldn't really come up with the reasons. My husband and I originally met through my dad. Christy, his name is Phil, and he is a very talented employee in my company. Nice to meet you. My name is Phil. Phil was a company employee working for the company which was owned by my dad. He was two years older than me, seemed to have a good attitude towards work, making good results, and for this my dad trusted him. I was working at a company, which was a business partner for my dad's company, and I was introduced to him when I went to dad's company for a business meeting. Christy, you aren't married yet, and I heard that you're not dating anyone currently, so I thought, why not Phil? What? Wait a minute, dad. What are you saying all of a sudden? I was surprised when dad suddenly suggested Phil as my fiancé. I mean, you can't stay unmarried like this, and I'm not saying that you two should get married. I just wanted him to meet my daughter because he is brilliant and excellent. You should go to dinner once with him and talk with him. Won't it be a bother for you, Phil? I mean, my dad suddenly made such a reckless request to you. No, I don't think it's reckless at all. In fact, I feel very honored. If you don't mind, I would like to have dinner with you once. Phil approached me in a such a positive way that I got a little excited. And we actually went out to dinner, and he was very kind and also interesting to talk to. But he was also quite a gentleman, without being very shallow about anything. To be honest, I was attracted to him right away. When Dad asked me how it was like with Phil, I told him he was fun and nice, and I was too embarrassed to say that I liked him a lot. But I kept in touch with him without telling my dad about it, and we started seeing each other after that. And after a few more dates, we decided to officially go out. Phil looked at me seriously and said that he wanted me to go out with him with marriage in mind. I said yes to his confession and then decided to inform this to dad. My dad said, Oh, you decided to go out with him? Good, good, good. And he was certainly overjoyed. And from then on, Phil and I continued to date. He always made me great date plans and treated me like a princess. I was puzzled because I had never had a man treat me so kind like him before, and I was just very happy. I was beginning to think that I wanted to marry such a wonderful man like Phil. About a year after we started to go out, Phil proposed to me. The place where Phil proposed to me was at a very beautiful table with a night view at a top-class restaurant. I waited for his words with anticipation and excitement, hoping that he might propose to me. Then Phil pulled out a ring box from his pocket, pulled out a ring from it, and finally proposed to me. Christy, please marry me. I will make you happy for the rest of your life. Yes. Yes, I will marry you, Phil. 
I felt like I was in heaven. I was so happy that he proposed to me that I could have just died like this. And when I told my dad about the marriage, he was very happy. Oh, Christy, honey, I'm so happy for you. I'm sure that your mother in heaven is definitely happy too. You're right, Dad. I'll make sure I can deliver a wonderful wedding to Mom. Mom died of illness 10 years ago. And since then, Dad and I have lived together. Just the two of us. I wish Mom could have seen me as a bride. But I am sure she will be smiling at me in heaven. Afterwards, Phil and I had met with his family and we held a wonderful wedding. And it all went well with no issues. My friends and colleagues congratulated me a lot, and I once again experienced the peak of happiness at the wedding. My dad, being the president of the company, tried very hard not to shed tears in front of his subordinates, but I could tell that he was very moved and emotional. Dad must have been really happy because he kept on congratulating me. We finished the wedding in a very happy state, and I was just imagining the joyous married life that was to come. And then finally, my newlywed life with my husband began. My husband had asked me to quit my job after we got married, so I took the opportunity to quit the company I had been working for, and became a full-time housewife. I loved my job, but my life with my husband was still more important, which is why I quit my job without hesitation and became a housewife. I was determined to do my best in the house chores for my husband, who worked very hard for me. But my hopes were shattered in an instant. It was one month after my husband and I got married. Hey, can't you cook anything better? Huh? My husband suddenly says something like that to me so bluntly that I froze. Hey, are you even listening to me properly? Oh, uh, y yeah. Then hurry up and answer me. You have no common sense at all, huh? What? Anyways, answer me. I'm asking if you can cook anything better or not. Uh, um... Is there something that you didn't like which I cooked? It's everything. Everything you cook is just too plain. Can't you cook something that's more flavorful? I'm sorry, honey. I was trying to make something healthy and well-balanced, though. I want to eat something that has meat and fried food. Since what you cooked was mainly vegetables and soup. You better make something good from tomorrow, okay? Uh, okay. I was surprised at the sudden change in my husband's attitude. And it was not only about cooking, but also about other things. Why is the bathtub not hot enough? Hey, why aren't my clothes dry whenever I want to wear them, huh? You're such a useless housewife, huh? My husband's verbal abuse was getting extremely harsh, and I was becoming more and more afraid of him. I wondered where the kind and gentle man he used to be had gone to. And the most scary thing about my husband is that he always acts like he's a good person on the outside. Whenever Phil meets my dad, he acts as a kind, sincere husband and smiling as the nice young man he used to be. Sometimes he brings his co-workers home with him and he asks the same way as if he was a very good husband to me. But when it is just the two of us, he becomes very scary and he is not satisfied unless everything is done just the way he wants it. My dream of a happy, wonderful marriage with him was shattered in an instant and I was in complete despair. After that, my husband's excessive and hostile attitude towards me continued. I even considered divorcing him, but my husband, perhaps seeing through what I was thinking, told me, If you are thinking about divorce, don't you dare do it. How bad would it be for the CEO's daughter to get divorced after only a month or two? 
That's going to be bad for your father's reputation, and it's going to be bad for the company's reputation. You're going to make your own father suffer if you divorce me. Oh, n no. At that time, I was not thinking straight and being logical at all. So I strongly felt that I didn't want to bother or worry my dad with what I had to deal with my husband. But do I have no choice but to endure what my husband says to me every single day? Thinking like that made me even more depressed. Hey, hurry up and pour me some beer. There's nothing in my glass, you know. I'm sorry. My god, you're really useless. I mean, you were raised up by your father with no mother at all, so you weren't taught proper values, right? D don't say it like that. Huh? Do you have something to say? Ah! My husband threw the glass of beer at me just as I screamed. Fortunately, the glass did not hit my face or my body, but the beer splashed onto my face and the glass broke when it hit the wall. You should clean up these broken glasses since this all happened because of you. I won't forgive you if you didn't clean it properly and hurt my feet when I walk around here. So then I wiped my face with a towel and cleaned the broken glasses carefully so as not to hurt myself. While I was cleaning up carefully, my husband was humming and taking a bath. But I'm the one who wants to take a bath right now. Little by little, my anger towards my husband began to rise. He must think that I can't go through with a divorce. He better not take me lightly. I am not going to let him get away with what he had done to me. Up until now, I was being weak towards Phil, but I am a woman who does things when she has to. I won't let him talk me down. At that moment, I decided that I was ready to fight my husband. I don't care what happens. Whatever happens, happens. My dad would understand. A few days later, my husband again got angry at me with no good reason. And this was triggered by a certain incident. Hey, a friend of mine who studied abroad is coming back this weekend, and we're going to celebrate her return with a party. I'm thinking of going, but is that okay? When I asked my husband about it, as expected, he did not allow it. Of course not. You have to cook dinner for me, you know. Oh, for dinner, I was thinking I could already have it made for you. The moment I said that, my husband slammed the table. You've got to be kidding. You want me to eat a pre-cooked meal? You know that I work my butt off to provide everything for you, right? So you better make freshly made meal every day and serve it to me. Can't you even understand that, you good-for-nothing woman? My husband still yells at me and shouting terrible words at me. But I wasn't going to let him talk to me like that anymore. I've had enough. I will go back to my parents' house. I became emotional and this was the first time I argued against my husband, Phil. And as expected, Phil got bright red and was very angry. Oh, don't be ridiculous. I won't accept that. My husband was extremely angry, but I couldn't lose to him either. I don't care whether you approve or not. I just can't stay with you who treats me like your slave. Then don't ever come back here. Make sure to sign the divorce papers before you leave. Saying this, Phil pushed the divorce papers into my face. I just couldn't take it anymore. Fine then. What? I got my pen. And as I began to sign the papers, Phil widened his eyes, looking confused. C come on, you can't be serious, right? Of course I'm serious. I can't keep on doing this with you anymore. When Phil realized that I was serious, he suddenly started to panic. H hey, wait a minute. Where are you going? So I told you, I'm going back to my parents' house. As soon as I finished signing the divorce papers, I put them in my bag and started packing my belongings. My husband watched in confusion. Well then, thank you for everything you've done. But well, it's more like I was the one who did everything. I said sarcastically and left the house to go back to my parents' house. Oh, Christy honey, 
What's wrong? I can't believe you suddenly came back home with a big luggage. My dad was surprised to see my luggage. I, on the other hand, had tears flowing down my cheek when I saw my dad. C Christy? Before I knew it, I was hugging dad. What's wrong? What in the world happened, honey? I... I... In any case, just come into the house. I'll make you some tea. Dad said that, and we both went into the living room. And after drinking the tea which calmed me down, I told him everything. He listened quietly, and then quietly opened his mouth. Honey, I'm sorry for giving you a hard time. I'm really sorry. Oh no, it's not your fault, Dad. No, first of all, it was me who introduced Phil to you. And besides, it's true that he was using me as a leverage for you to obey him, Christy. And you put up with it because you were worried about me and the company. So I'm responsible for that. My father said that as he apologized. Then he looked up at me and said with a serious look on his face, As for Phil, I will punish him thoroughly. I looked at Dad and nodded strongly. The next day, I received so many phone calls from my husband. I was mentally exhausted and was resting at my parents' house, but my husband was calling me incessantly, so I had no choice but to answer the phone. F finally you picked up! Hey, what the hell did you say to your dad? Did you know that your dad fired me right away? What do you mean, what? Of course. I told him everything you've done to me. The many heartless outbursts, the way you used my dad and his company to threaten me, and even the way you made fun of the fact that I was brought up with a single parent and made fun of me and my family. Do you think that a daughter who heard all of this from his own daughter wouldn't be angry? Well, a man who would tell his wife something like that would never get any credibility in the company anyways. You've got to be kidding me. You have no proof that I said anything that bad to you. Don't you dare look down on me like that. I've been keeping a diary and other records of what you've done and said to me, and I've even recorded our conversations. I already have plenty of evidence of your daily verbal abuse to me. No, no way. Oh, and I heard that there was another reason for you being fired. My dad contacted everyone who had ever left the company, and they all said they were changing jobs or leaving for personal reasons, but when he asked them the exact reason, they all told him the real reason. They all were saying that they had all been harassed by you and that you had even taken credit for their work. When my dad told them that he was going to fire you and rehire them all back, they were happy to cooperate. What? You act like a good person in public that none of your superiors could see your true nature. You even deceived my father, so I'll give you credit for that. But don't think that you can keep on doing bad things forever. You will never be able to move on to another company in your line of work. And I'm going to charge you compensation for the emotional distress and all the harassment you've done to me. C compensation I even have a doctor's note. You'll be notified through my lawyer, so you'll have to pay for it. The only place you're going is to hell. Oh no. My ex-husband's voice sounded so weak when I argued back everything I had on my mind. I teamed up with Dad and succeeded in getting Phil being punished. Afterwards, my ex-husband had to pay me the compensation fee. He's now working part-time and more than half of his salary pays off for the compensation fee. And Phil has been cut off from his parents because of this incident, and now he is living a lonely, sad life with no one to rely on. But he deserves what he got, and it's a really good feeling. Meanwhile, I went back to my parents' house and started living with my dad again. Then, Dad suggested that, if I was willing, I would work with him on the premise that I would take over as the next CEO, so I decided to join his company. Currently, I am learning my job while working hard every day to take over the position of the CEO. From now on, I will live with my dad happily, 
and I hope to make the company a success with my dad. Thank you for watching until the end. Please subscribe to our channel. See you in our next video.